Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to the Kellogg's YouTube channel. Okay, I don't know what that was. I just wanted to try something different. So for today's video, we're going to be doing a talk on the importance of having your own website and a little tutorial on how to start designing your own website using an engine like Squarespace. Having a proper website was something that I wish I thought about more seriously earlier on. So I thought this might help you guys out a bit. As some of you may have already seen, I recently switched over to Squarespace to update my website because my current one kind of so I basically wanted to have everything in a single place. I wanted my shop, my gallery, my portfolio, my contact stuff, you know, all my information in one site. But the best part, despite knowing donuts about web design or coding, I managed to put together my own website in just a few hours from scratch. And I'm pretty proud of that. For whatever my opinion's worth, I think it looks great. But I need external validation, so I went on over to Omegle and I asked a stranger what they thought, and this is what they said. Wow. That's right, you heard it here first. I know donuts about web design, so fake it till you make it. So anyway, Squarespace has happily sponsored this video and has given me the opportunity to design my own website and share with you guys how you can start your own. But before we do that, let's talk about websites and why do we, specifically artists, need a website? The most obvious, simple answer to that is if someone asks you, where can I find your work? You can say, well, here. But let's backtrack a few years and look at my personal experience with websites as an example. Starting out, I began with using DeviantArt as my site because it was my portfolio at the time and it was a means of contacting me. The problem was that you needed a DeviantArt account in the first place to contact me or to message anyone for that matter. And I don't really think everyone has a DeviantArt account. A few years later, I did design my own website and that was basically a one page landing page with several separate links to different sites like my portfolio, my contact form, my shop. The problem with that site was if someone was viewing my portfolio, they still would have no idea that I even had a shop or sold prints because that was also on a separate site. And that matters because that person may have wanted to buy some of my work. They just didn't know I sold any. So I still needed somewhere to send people so that they could find my work, my portfolio, uh, what I've done, you know, my clients, my shop, everything. Heck, I still get asked, do you sell prints or where's your shop, man? As a creative individual or business, whether you're an illustrator, a photographer or a musician, Position. You need a space to showcase who you are, what your work is, and what you have to offer. You need a place for your work to be seen properly. And I say properly because although Instagram is a great way for your work to get out there, it's not going to do your work justice. It's not going to show the insane details of that giant 10 meter mural that you did. Picture this. I'm someone who wants to commission you to do a photo shoot of my dog that I still don't have, sadly. I see your work on Instagram and it looks great so far, but it's just full of cropped detail shots or behind the scenes and the occasional selfie. Yes, your hair looks great in that selfie, but I still can't see your full body of work. And that may be the end of it because I don't feel comfortable being that guy about to slide into your DMs. Now, don't get me wrong, I've managed to get this far, luckily, thanks to platforms like Instagram. It's just, I wish I'd thought more seriously about having a proper website. You want a visitor to be able to find everything they need to find about you and your work in a single place. So let's get started with designing our own website from scratch. Just remember, if you are worried about not knowing anything about web design or coding, it's completely fine. Like I said, the great thing about Squarespace is that you don't need to know. It's stupidly easy. And I'm here to walk you guys through it. So let's get into it. From my very limited studies in graphic design, one thing that I've learned is that a great starting point for any creative project is actually researching and brainstorming what it is exactly that you're trying to achieve. So what do I want from this website? You've got to ask yourself a few questions. Firstly, who are you? Are you an artist? Are you a blogger? Are you an animator? Are you a designer or a sculptor? Secondly, what's the purpose of your website? Are you selling something? Are you showing your work? Are you offering a service? Thirdly, who is your audience? Are they young? Are they old? What do they do? And lastly, what is your desired impact? What do you want people to immediately think and feel the moment they enter your website? Whatever your answers to these questions, that's going to be your identity. For inspiration, I've actually looked at one of my all-time favourite artists, Loish, and what I really love about her website is that immediately as you enter, you're thrown into this beautiful imagery of her work and all these colours. You already know that she's a digital artist, and I really love how her website is organised so cleanly and everything's just really modern and simple. For my identity, I'm an artist, and so the main purpose for me is to have an online portfolio to share my work. I'd also like to include a shop and other information about my work. 
My intended audience will be my followers mostly, but also clients and galleries, and I want the impact to be clean and professional, but also colourful. With all this in mind, let's start putting a website together. Over on Squarespace, you start off automatically with a free trial. We then go to stage 2 where we pick a theme. At first, this is a bit daunting because as you can see, there's probably over a hundred themes to choose from. But this is exactly why we developed our little identity brief. We now know exactly what we want. My main function still is a portfolio, so let's filter it down to art and design. There are still loads of designs, but you can quickly filter through them by previewing them like so. I'm looking at Wexley right now. He sounds like a pretty nice guy, pretty friendly guy. He's got a grid slash gallery based layout, which I think is perfect for a portfolio website. You can also see what he'd look like on different platforms by checking out the previews. Wexley looks pretty neat, so let's go with him. On the next page, you get asked to create an account, and then you're greeted by a lovely warm welcome by Wexley. Once you fill in your basic site info, you're then taken to the back end of your new site. There is quite a bit to go through, but the main three tabs that we're going to look at are Pages, Design and Settings. Pages is where you can build the pages and also add, remove or edit the content. Design is where you can customise aspects of your site like fonts, colours, your logo and settings is just same old settings, basically where you can edit the technical stuff. One tab you'll definitely want to check out here though is the connected accounts tab. This is where you can actually link your social media accounts to your site. Now let's actually stylize this website and make it our own. Head on over to the design menu and let's look at logo and title. Here you can change the title of your site or make it an image instead. You can also upload a fav icon, which is this little image you see at the top of your web browser. So I'd suggest uploading your own. Quick little tip, try make your logo a transparent PNG. That way it won't have an ugly white box if the background color of your website is different. You can create transparent PNGs in Photoshop by removing or separating the background and saving it for web as a PNG file with transparency. At any point, you can also switch your template easily by heading over to the template tab and installing a new template. You can install multiple templates if you like and make the changes go live at any point. It makes switching things up super easy. Continuing on, let's now head on over to the style editor. Now this is where you can actually personalize your site and its style. As you can see, there are a lot of options that you can adjust on the left side. But if you have no idea what any of these style options are, like outside padding, just hover your mouse over the word and it'll highlight to you what it is. Turns out, outside padding is just the space on the outside. You can tweak loads of different things like fonts, spacing, colours and even the way the site is aligned. But I want mine to be aligned left and there's a fun fact behind that. Your eye is naturally accustomed to an F pattern. Your eye goes left to right, top to bottom. So ideally you want to design your content so that the most important stuff goes in the top left corner and you work downwards. You could easily spend hours here tweaking little things. Spend your time here personalising your site and its style to make it unique to you. I'm tweaking my site so my social icons are a bit bigger and I'm adding accent colours to the headings. I'm adding oranges and blues because they're my favourite colours and I think my site needs some more colour. Another tip, consistency. When choosing fonts, imagery or colour, try to make it all consistent with your vision and your brand. For example, if you're a black and white wedding photographer, don't use every single colour of the rainbow or the Comic Sans font. On that note, my biggest tip, if you are thinking about using Comic Sans, Limit yourself to 2-3 to three fonts max, one usually for your heading and the other for your body text. Now let's head on over to the pages tab and actually start building our website. At first you'll have all these demo pages, so let's get rid of those first. To start adding pages, just click on that little plus button above and it'll give you an option of things you can build. For an artist, here are a few things that I think might be useful. Firstly, a gallery, an about page, a shop, a contact page, maybe a frequently asked questions or a CV, and your social media links. Let's start by building an about page. Create a new page by clicking on the little plus button. A bunch of page choices will pop up, but let's select page. On the left, as you can see, you'll have some pre-existing designs. You can design your own from scratch by selecting blank, but let's use a template to make it easier. Let's add an image and some text by first clicking on edit. If you do want to move things around, you can just click and drag. To add an item, hover over where you want to add it and click on the little pointer. And a list of options will pop up. Let's add a contact form and also edit the settings of where the emails will be sent to. All you have to do is look over onto the storage tab. 
You can also edit the settings of any other content item you've introduced to the page just by hovering over it and clicking edit. And bam, that's our about page. Next, building the gallery or the portfolio. And this is probably the most the easiest part. All you need to do is upload images and edit the information. There's not much to say here, but I do have a bunch of tips instead. Firstly, make sure your images are correctly formatted and sized. As it is for web, they should be RGB, JPEG files at nothing higher than 72 DPI or PPI. Secondly, try to keep your file sizes small and resize or compress them accordingly. You don't want visitors waiting around minutes for your images to load. If you are worried that your file sizes are too big, an easy way to check is to just view your website in incognito mode. You can use a program like Adobe Photoshop or even Preview to format the image as you need. One super important thing that I want to show you guys here is how to actually edit the design of the content, like this gallery. There are basically two modes you work in, pages and design mode. If you're in pages mode, you can add, edit, move or remove the content on that page. But if you go back to the main menu, you can switch to design mode. Here you can then go to the style editor and tweak the settings of the content. For example, this gallery. I can scroll down the style editor and change how big the images appear or even the spacing between the images. Now let's finally make a shop page. In the pages mode, create a new page for product and add your first product. Upload an image and fill any info you need. Be sure to also check out the other tabs as well and once you're happy, press save or save and publish for it to go live straight away. If you don't want a page to appear linked in your navigation bar, you can easily hide it by dragging it from the side of the pages menu into the not linked section. Another fun little pages feature is adding expanding navigation menus, which looks like this. To do this, create a new page and select folder and drag your pages into that folder. Bada bing, bada boom. And that's how you can set up a basic site. I continue to tweak mine, but let's take a final look. I finally got a gallery, a shop, my links, my info, and I think it looks pretty professional. I was really lucky to be able to work with Squarespace on this and they've happily sponsored this video, but I wouldn't be endorsing it unless I believed in a product like this. I spent years fiddling with sites and trying different things, but I finally managed to whip this up in a few hours and I'm actually really 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 happy with my new site. I think that says a lot. It's an insanely easy engine to use and the possibilities feel endless, so you can spend less time worrying about learning web coding and instead just focus on doing doing the stuff you need to do. If you do want to try out designing your own website today, just head on over to www.squarespace.com forward slash Kellogg's Loops and you can start off with a free 14 day trial or get 10% off. You'd honestly be surprised with what you could come up with in a few hours. And that brings us to the end of today's video, but before we finish, I just want to talk a little bit about this series and why I'm starting it. Basically, I just want to make a bunch of videos about how to get started as an independent artist. Things like how to start making prints, how to start selling prints, your work online, uh, about getting your work out there. Because starting out, information on these kinds of topics can be a bit scarce. And by no means am I some kind of business or entrepreneurial expert. These are just things that I've learned through the years through trial and error, and I want to share them with you guys in hopes that maybe they might help you guys with your journey. That's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and, you know, maybe learned something, found it insightful, educational. I hope you guys are having an awesome day and I'll see you soon.